it's definitely lifting it. I need to take that cap off. I want to bring it to my tent. This is now my tent too, but it's, uh, I bought it off of the person who used to own it. And I'm going to dismantle this thing over the coming months. But in the meantime, I got to go over to my other tent. And uh, with all this rain and some of the snow that's expected over the next couple of days, I'm desperate to get this thing off. It's just that uh, I'm not prepared. I don't have the right tools. I thought it could easily just come off. But it looks like it's crimped on. I think if I do this, I'm just going to bend it. Oh! Yes! I have bleach that's open and, it, and it's just like allowing for bleach air to go through the tent right now. The plan was to keep bears away and to keep the mouse out of the tent because I have a mouse friend here somewhere. So I need to open this up and I need to air it out because it's probably going to be pretty strong smelling. It's just a trick I was taught. Have bleach, keep away the animals. Zero degrees, maybe maybe one degree Celsius. So that's like 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It is not warm and it is wet. sawdust and that burns real nice just sawdust soaked in oil I need to make sure this goes right away I'm not messing around You guys see all that steam coming off my legs? Wow. It shows you how soaked I am.
Okay, folks. I'm in one of those situations where my legs are so wet, my pants are so wet, I've got no choice. I'm taking off my pants. I'm going to hang them over the fire and let them have a really quick dry because they're just soaked. And, uh, and I'm going to have a cup of coffee while that's happening. I'm not going to show you guys me taking my pants off. But uh, yeah, I got to pause for a second so I can take care of myself because I, I can't be I can't be living in really wet clothes here for the next I should have brought extra pants but I brought so much stuff that uh, I didn't want to have any extra weight so I didn't bring extra pants these won't take long to to thaw out here to to dry out I should say thaw out is what it feels like so cold this right here is a new uh, lantern that I have and pretty bright, eh? And the cool thing about this one is it's Bluetooth. So look, it, it's a Coleman. I'm not sponsored by Coleman or anything. I just bought this thing. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try that out tonight. And I've been using this one here for the longest time, like, I don't know, for four years, three or four years. And uh, when I put it in my bag today, before I hiked out, it turned on in my bag. So I opened my bag and the light was on, so I lost two hours of battery. So thankfully, I brought the second one. And uh, so yeah, it's got a speaker. This one's got a speaker, Bluetooth speaker, so I can listen to music. warming up really nicely in here it's almost uh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit 25 degrees Celsius beautiful perfect it's really starting to take that chill out of my bones as I wait for my pants to dry I'll give you guys a little bit of a tour of the of the camp for the weekend so up top TP Sleeping gear, first aid, potato chips. Got a gas lantern here. As you guys can see, I've got a couple of pots up here. I've got a Coleman stove, Coleman oven. That's my sleeping bag right there. This is all my camera gear back here. Down here, a lot of this stuff is normally hung, but when I, when I show up and I need little hooks to hang everything because I'm wet, I just put all the, the saws down here in the corner. Some rope. So yeah, I got a green dry bag there. Got an ax, it's a half decent ax, it's not the greatest ax. This saw is a silky saw. It's a big boy and I, I love it. That's all my food there in that dry sack. It's my, there's my life jacket, my rain jacket. Plastic bags, can't have enough plastic bags when you're out camping. This is my cot for the night. There's some Labrador uh, snowshoes. I grew up in Labrador. Those are made by a gentleman by the name of Bernie Crawford. Water. Uh, I got my, my fire starting stuff in that white bucket. That silver bucket there. The galvanized pail. I'll use that as a pee bucket tonight. Got some propane tanks and those are pretty much um, they're nearing empty, but there's enough there to, to have a couple of meals for sure. This is a grill that goes in my stove, in my wood stove. I can cook right in my wood stove. This is, uh, it goes on top of the grill. And you can almost make it like a little oven area on top of the wood stove, which is pretty cool. And you can see I'm just drying out my, my hoodie. And that's my, my Big Bill. This right here is my Big Bill... Um, wool jacket that I absolutely adore. I love this thing. And I'll be wearing it all weekend once everything dries out. This is my bag of knives. And this is, uh, these are my gloves that are drying out. This right here is a heat reflector to the touch. Very cold, which is amazing. And that just pushes the heat right back into the tent. Uh, not much of a supply of wood in here right now, but that's gonna change quickly. And there's the stove and this thing 
Took me a while to get used to. It's handcrafted by a gentleman who lives uh, in my community. And I tell you, once I figured that thing out, there's no going back. It's a perfect camp stove. I've been walking around this tent without pants on for the last hour. Those pants are close now, they're getting there. I want them completely dry before I put them back on. That's the beauty of a wood stove. You cannot beat it. You cannot beat a wood stove. I would not want to just be in a nylon tent without any, like, any source of dry heat right now. It would not be comfortable. And this is very, very comfortable. Even without pants. Pants are nice and dry. Oh, feels so good. Now I've got some rain gear over top. I didn't wear the rain gear when I did the trek and the canoe into the tent because I knew I was gonna be sweating. This stuff doesn't breathe. So it was, a, it was one of those things that was, do I want to have really wet legs or do I want to be really sweaty? And I went with the wet legs. And now my pants are dry and I'm good to go. And I've got to go out and I've got to take care of my wood situation for the night. I want to eat right now, but I'm going to hold off for another hour. I've been noticing a lot of this moss is really taking off right now on everything. It's just growing everywhere on all the trees. It's not something I notice in the in the summertime. This old stump it's got some good wood in it. I'm gonna take it. Good, good. Good. Beautiful.
This is salt beef, turnip, potatoes, chicken, and broccoli just fried in a pan and butter. I'm gonna put some ketchup on that and I am going to eat it. I don't have any plates here this weekend, so eating out of pots. Fine by me. Oh yeah. Oh, so good. Hot. It's called hash. You just mix it all together. I call it mash. I know that's not the right terminology for it, but I'm like mashing everything together. But it's called hash. Mmm. Wow. So good. I really want to get rid of the smell of any food on any of the stuff that I'm going to be keeping in the tent now. I'm going to be burning this tonight. I've got a few pieces left. This old 4x4 stuff that I brought up years ago. And it burns beautifully overnight. You load a stove with that and you just stack it up, close the stove down, and that thing will just keep such a nice temperature in the tent. Tomorrow is a big day of wood for me. This winter I'm going to bring wood from my house. I've already cut four cords. And uh, actually almost five cords now I've gathered for, for the house for this winter. But I think I'm going to go get one more cord. And I'm going to bring bogan loads of that wood up here in the winter time. Here's the big moment. The thing is about these lights is that I can like change them to uh, so many different colors. It'd be perfect for Christmas time. But in the meantime, yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool. A little, little ambiance.
Should be a really comfortable sleep tonight. I have a nice temperature, I have enough wood. Let the sleeping bag puff out for a bit. For the next hour or so, and then I'm going to sleep. Today was all about just surviving that crap weather. Getting the lights up. Cutting some wood, eating some delicious food. So what I'll do now is listen to a bit of music, have a nightcap, go to sleep. I'm hoping this rain stops and tomorrow it's, it's drier out. It'll be much more enjoyable. And I'm really hoping for some clear skies tomorrow night because the northern lights have been pretty decent in the last few weeks. So it would be pretty special to be able to to grab some for this video, so fingers crossed for that. But it's not happening tonight. It's too nasty out there. Anyway, I'm gonna hit the sack soon, and I'll see you guys bright and early. to the tree. Listen to that. This is my new favorite thing to do when I want a coffee real fast. Been in there about two minutes. Oh yeah, and that is ready. This lake is going to freeze <clears throat> probably in about a month from now. It's going to really start freezing over. And so I'm hoping to get it one, maybe two more trips before the lake freezes over. And then once that starts to happen, once it starts to go to the, you know, to the point where you, you can't, it's not safe, I would say because there's, it's going to be thin ice everywhere. It's going to be maybe like three weeks, maybe even a bit longer where I won't be coming out here doing videos because it's just too dangerous. You can't canoe on ice and you can't snowmobile on thin ice. And I'm hoping we have a really cold start to the fall, <clears throat> early winter I guess you could say. And I'm out here by the end of November on my snowmobile. Thank you. 
Perfect. I got this uh, this old rim from the other site and I've always wanted a rim. I didn't realize how heavy they were. This might be for a big truck or something. Anyway, I'm going to uh, cook my breakfast out here this morning and I need to eat. It's 11 o'clock. I haven't eaten yet. So I'll eat and then I'll cut up all that wood that I gathered. I'm just finding so much wood just by walking through the through the woods. Oh, like that stump's gonna burn nice. Although maybe I should put it in like this. There we go. Look at this thing right here, just for the taking. It's a little bit rotten, but it'll burn. Oh, look at that, perfect. Okay.
I'm, I'm so hungry. This is a perfect breakfast. I love beans and ham. Absolutely love it. Oh, it's hot. Mmm. Oh. 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 Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is a pretty good load of wood right here. There's definitely a few weekends here of wood. A lot of this stuff was just lying on the ground. This one here that I'm holding on to, I just pushed it over. <laughs> it was, the bottom end is really rotten, but there's good wood here. And the way I see it, the rotten wood is good just to keep that fire in the tent going throughout the day and the other stuff, the valuable stuff, the stuff that's thick and, uh, and not so rotten, that's the stuff I'll use when it's really critical at night. You can see this guy is really rotten. I'm hoping it's not the whole way up. But that's what you have to expect when you're getting free wood lying on the ground. Now we're talking, look at that. It's perfect. As I move up the tree, this is what I'm getting. And this is dense. And this is a easily a 20, 25, 30 foot tree. So I've got a few nights of, I got a couple of nights of, of wood here, this one tree. So it really paid off to do this, to go into the woods, to take a risk on trees that look like this at the bottom. You go in a couple of feet and this is what you've got. Really happy. Mad respect to the people who had to do this before chainsaws came into, came into existence because this is not easy work, I gotta say. Those people who used to cut, uh, cut trees with saws way back when must have been strong, tough people, that is for sure. I'm happy with this. And you know what? I barely even, uh, well, I should say maybe two-fifths. I got about two-fifths of it cut. Quite a bit left to go. So, fruitful day. I mean, that is gathering all that wood. Cutting all that wood up, that was three to four hours worth of work. And so I didn't want to be filming me just cutting wood all afternoon. There's only so much of that anyone can take watching on YouTube. But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm really happy. My tarp is center on top. It wasn't for the longest time. I've already burnt one side of it, as you can see. The other side was starting to burn too. Those flies are invaluable. They provide extra heat. They provide insane protection. So 
yeah, it was, uh, it was important to do that. And I think it's going to last the winter. You have to have lots of mustard if you're going to have a Montreal smoked meat sandwich. And I mean lots. Oh yeah. First things first. Mm. Amazing. Wow. Okay. There's a huge gap here. And uh, if you're new to my channel, when I built this, this front entrance way with the walls and the door, uh, everything was, was nice and flush and even. But over the last couple of years, I've had separation happen. And I believe what's happening is this part of the tent is actually dipping down. So, someone suggested to me that I put a little wedge in underneath this corner of the tent to lift it up a little bit. I don't know if that's gonna work. Also, my tent weighs a lot. <laughs> There's no way that I can lift this thing and wedge something in. So, I brought a car jack with me. This might end up being the most ridiculous thing I've ever done in my life. Also, whenever I cut with this buck saw, it always goes this way. No matter what I do, I've tightened up the blade, it just does this. Anybody out there who has experience with buck saws, please let me know why this is happening. Is it the way I'm cutting? Is it something to do with my saw? You can see it does have a bit of wobble, but every time I cut, this is gonna go all the way down this way. every time. I don't get it. I've got my car jack here underneath this corner and I want to have it underneath this part of the pallet. It's the thickest part of the pallet but as you can see I've got some wood breaking here on the pallet itself. So that's why I just cut that piece of two by six to make this stronger and I have no idea what's going to happen here. All I know is that I want it to go up just a little bit just a little bit, and then I'm gonna wedge something underneath it there, a little piece of wood. And then I'll, re then I'll let the car jack down. That's the plan.
it's definitely lifting it. 100%. Okay, good. I can't even close this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna take it down a little bit, just a little bit, and then uh, I have to wedge it. Didn't need much. Oh my, that's perfect. It needs to have a little bit of a gap, and I'm okay with that. But wow, this is great. Okay. Oh my, it's, it's made a huge difference, because my door used to, used to uh, rub up against the floor. Oh my. Yes. I'm kind of fortunate that the buck saw did this because now I'm able to use this as a wedge. Look at that. Hooey! In terms of preparing this for winter right now, I feel really good with how level it is across the front. And to think that I jacked that up with all of that wood in there, the stove is on that side. Man, there's no way I would have been able to do that without the car jack. So anyway, thanks for all the ideas. And if you have any other ideas about how to make this tent even more um, winter proof, let me know. I might borrow your ideas. Yeah. Okay. That's it for me. I'm going to bed. I'm going to relax by the fire. And uh, I'll see you guys in the morning. Those northern lights were like some of the best I've ever seen in my life. And I am so fortunate that I was able to get out and to capture some of those. That happened, um, well, it started early in the evening and it went on all night. And so you can see I'm really dealing with a lot of uh, condensation on the lens once things start to, to cool off throughout the night. So it's like a, a haze that comes over the lens at a certain point. And uh, yeah, that was about two and a half hours of Northern Lights that you, uh, that you saw there. Do you want to see the most beautiful thing in the world?
If you haven't tried fresh Granny Smith apple in apple cinnamon oatmeal, then you haven't lived. This is the best. And you you cook the oatmeal first, then you just slice in that that fresh apple. You don't cook with the apple in it. Don't do that. The oatmeal will be hot enough to heat up that apple. That apple will still have lots of crisp when you bite into it. It is, uh, I probably made too much, but, and it's very, very hot. Oh, that's a great way to start a day right there. So after I'm done eating, I have a little bit of work that I need to do. I'm going to cut up some more trees, then I'm going to split some wood, and I'm going to get myself some of that really dry, those really dry um, branches, and I'm going to situate myself so that way when I come back, I'm really hoping I can come back very soon and within the next week, and I'll be able to come in right away and just get that fire started. I'll have everything set up. Now, quite a few people especially in the winter time, critique me because I like to come out and do all of that fire preparation when I arrive um, in terms of splitting, feather sticks, dry branches, whatever the heck it is. And then sometimes I'll use my knife on some birch bark, just that, that really fancy bushcrafty type fire starting method. I like to do that in the winter time. Um, but at the same time, I get criticized because a lot of people think, when you have a camp, you got to have everything ready to go when you show up in case you, you know, maybe I, I get wet and I, I fall into the water and I have to come in really quickly and get the fire started. So there is definitely, I can see the argument for sure. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to eat this. I'm going to prepare myself and then I'm going to pack up and then I'm going to go. So now I'm completely ready to go and I cannot wait to come back. I love this place. This has been one of the best trips I've ever had. And, uh, and it's just, it's exciting knowing that I'm a regular out here, even when it's not snowing now, <laughs> I work harder to come out, but it's so worth it. And these longer trips too, I love them. And these longer videos, I just really enjoy making them. So if you like what you've, what you've seen today, uh, hit the like button. That would be great. And uh, by the way, I'm on Instagram, a J in the woods. You can uh, follow me there and see pictures of my adventures out here. So yeah, that's it for this video. I'll be back really soon.